Hi there, everyone. Welcome to The Daily Gardener. I'm your host, Jennifer Ebling. It's May 15th. Plant height is one of the factors that's often indicated on plant tags. But mature height often takes 10 years, especially if you're talking about trees and shrubs. Most plants benefit from some amount of pruning, in which case their height can be controlled. By the way, bamboo is the fastest growing plant on the planet. It can grow three feet in just 24 hours. Here's today's brevities. President Abraham Lincoln created the USDA today in 1862. When Lincoln signed the bill, he was bombarded with advice about who should be the first commissioner of agriculture. A man named Isaac Newton, a direct descendant of Sir Isaac Newton, got the job. Newton was born in Burlington County, New Jersey, on March 31, 1800. He'd set up an impeccable farm in Delaware County, Pennsylvania, near Philadelphia. His farm was a model for others, efficient, orderly, productive, a master relationship builder. Every week, Newton sent butter from his dairy farm to the White House. It wasn't long before Newton and his entire family became friends with the Lincolns. That's why when it came time for Lincoln to make the appointment, Newton got the job. When he was appointed, Isaac Newton quoted Jonathan Swift, saying, It should be the aim of every young farmer to do his best to make two blades of grass grow where but only one grew before. Newton brought the same high standards and efficiency he'd cultivated for his farm to the USDA. Three years after his appointment, on the evening of April 15, 1865, around 10.30 p.m., it was Isaac Newton who had rushed over to the White House and informed the doorkeeper, Thomas Pendle, that President Lincoln had been shot. On this day, Governor David B. Hill signed a law creating the Adirondack and Catskill Forest Preserve, ensuring the land be forever kept as wild forest lands. The previous year, Charles Sprague Sargent had been appointed to lead a three-member committee, and Sargent's team created two historically important maps of the Adirondacks. On the 1890 map, forest areas were outlined in red, and the park was outlined in blue. Today, the blue line is a term to mean boundaries of the park. And if you get a chance to check out the original map, you'll see that the blue ink has turned almost black after a century of aging. An article called The Prettiest Wildflowers by Eddie C. Alexander was featured in the San Francisco Call, May 15, 1898. In the span of a decade, she'd noticed a remarkable decline in the quantity and quality of wildflowers in the area at the turn of the century. Here's her comment about California cream cups, an annual herb in the poppy family, found mainly in California. She said, nine years ago, cream cups grew in great profusion all around San Francisco. The most beautiful ones I have ever seen were near Holy Cross Cemetery. But now you can scarcely find a plant, and the blossoms are small and of an inferior quality. In the article, it said that Alexander's wildflower collection was the best in the state of California, and Alexander had teamed up with a chemist, and they'd worked to refine a preservative that would help the wildflowers retain their fresh-picked original color in Alexander's herbarium. Alexander's process worked remarkably well, yet sadly, she never disclosed her formula. Today, the New Orleans Museum of Art will unveil its six-and-a-half-acre sculpture garden expansion. The new expansion includes 26 new pieces of art, 65 new trees, almost 500 shrubs, as well as the creation of an indoor sculpture pavilion and an outdoor amphitheater with beautiful grass-stepped seating. 
In unearthed words, the world lost the poet Emily Dickinson on this day in 1886. Every year, the museum hosts a poetry walk to mark the anniversary of her death. It takes place this Saturday from 1030 to noon. The walk begins at her home and ends at her grave in West Cemetery. At the cemetery, you can join in the traditional light-hearted lemonade toast and read a favorite Dickinson poem or memory. Here's a poem we'll toast her with right now. Perhaps you'd like to buy a flower, but I could never sell. If you would like to borrow until the daffodil unties her yellow bonnet, beneath the village door, until the bees from clover rose their hawk and sherry draw, why, I will lend until just then, but not an hour more. Emily grew up gardening. She would help her mother with their large edible and ornamental garden. The flower garden became Emily's responsibility when she got older. She planted in a carefree cottage garden style. After Emily died, her sister Lavinia took over the garden. Emily's niece and editor Martha Dickinson Bianchi recalls, All Lavinia's flowers did as they liked, tyrannized over her, hopped out of their own beds and into each other's beds, were never reproved or removed as long as they bloomed. For a live flower to Aunt Lavinia was more than any dead horticultural principle. Today's book recommendation is Ina Coolbrith, The Bittersweet Song of California's First Poet Laureate by Alita George. I discovered Ina Coolbrith when I was researching Eddie Alexander. Eddie's book on wildflowers included some garden poems by Coolbrith. Coolbrith was the niece of the Joseph Smith of the Mormon Church, and she was known as the Pearl of her tribe, which included Bret Hart, Mark Twain, and John Muir. Jack London and Isadora Duncan considered her their literary godmother, and John Greenleaf Whittier knew more of her poems by heart than she did his. For today's garden chore, top dress your raised beds with a couple of inches of organic compost. After a season of rest, I start planting season off by adding nutrients back into my beds where I grow my edibles. When I harvest my spring crops, I'll add even more compost to keep the soil nutrient rich throughout the summer. Finally, here's something sweet to revive the little botanic spark in your heart. Today in 1869, Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth Cady Stanton founded the National Women's Suffrage Association in New York. As part of her rhetoric to fight for the right to vote, Stanton used the metaphor of the original garden when she said, Eve tasted the apple in the Garden of Eden in order to slake that intense thirst for knowledge that the simple pleasure of picking flowers and talking to Adam could not satisfy. Thanks for listening to The Daily Gardener. And remember, for a happy, healthy life, garden every day. The Daily Gardener is produced weekdays in lovely Maple Grove, Minnesota. You can find complete show notes over at thedailygardener.org. And be sure to share the show with your garden friends. You can find The Daily Gardener on all your favorite social media, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest, and of course, Facebook. While you're over at Facebook, don't forget to join The Daily Gardener community. Just search for these three words, Daily Gardener Community. The group will pop right up and then request to join. Finally, I want to thank my team at Podfly Productions, where my fabulous editor is Eric Begay. Have a great day in the garden, and we'll see you tomorrow.